Welcome to the Booktopia podcast. I'm Ben Hunter, Booktopia's Fiction Category Manager, and I'm recording again from home. Uh, my home is on unceded Gadigal land. Uh, today, I'm going to speak to Ruth MacGyver. Ruth MacGyver recently completed a PhD in the field of true crime inspired fiction with Curtin University, and her new novel, I Shot the Devil, won the 2018 Ritual Prize for Emerging Writers. Devil McTiernan is on the cover of this book endorsing it, and she calls it one of the freshest novels to come along in a long time. A tense, irresistible thriller shot through with moments of unnerving darkness, a clever, compelling read. I think Devil is dead right, and so Ruth MacGyver, I'm really glad to have you on the show. Welcome. Thank you so much. Um, how are you? Just to start. <laughs> yeah, I'm good. Um, you know, I'm I'm weathering the the sixth lockdown pretty well, I think. Um, you know, I'm six. In- did you say? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Counting them. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think in Melbourne, um, there's been there's been a lot of counting and lots of plays, lots of good puns and some great memes that have come out of um, each lockdown. Um, yeah, so I'm in regional Victoria, so we're, we, things have relaxed a little bit, but, you know, obviously, you know, without sounding hokey, we're kind of all in this together. So it doesn't really feel very nice being, um, let out to play when everyone else can't. And also, you know, obviously thinking of everyone and colleagues and stuff in Sydney too. So. Yeah. And that's, that's exactly how I kind of felt in Sydney last year when we were doing very well in Melbourne yeah. just wasn't yeah um let's talk about this awesome novel um because it's kind of bouncing around in my brain a bit it's really dark and just gorgeous um the core of it centers on this group of hooligan youths who in the 90s um in a picturesque town in uh the northeast of the United States you call the town Southport Mm-hmm. Uh, it's one dark night uh, uh, and they're hyped up on narcotics and rock and roll music and they go into the woods. Five of them go in and only two come out. And then years later, your hero, Aaron Sloan, uh, who's a magazine journalist, he's trying to find the truth of what happened that night. Uh, but as you get into the novel, you realise she's far more connected to the murder or those murders <laughs> <laughs> um then then is uh uh first apparent uh and you just cannot stop reading uh and and you bring in a lot of different elements into what is a really taut and pacey thriller so what was your what were your inspirations um in dreaming up this novel yeah it's interesting i i started actually writing um the novel as a memoir to begin with um, I'd, you know, because I'd lived in the States, uh, as a kid, I, I lived in a bunch of different countries as a kid, actually, but some of it had to do with re- remembrances of say living in a wealthy Long Island town, um, uh, you know, from say like nine to 14. And I, I knew that I would want to base it, have a crime at the center of that. And, um, and then I realized I did, you know, I didn't want to write a memoir. I was going to write a novel and I was shopping around and I found this case, this Ricky Casso case, which is um, what the um, novel draws upon. Um, so that was kind of the, the inspiration for it. And then I just, decided to frame it with the, you know, the sleuth um, being a journalist character who was obviously, you know, deeply involved in, in the case um, that she's investigating. Um, so those were the kind of uh, initial elements. And then, you know, as, as you start writing a novel, all these things start, um, you know, everything becomes part of the universe of the novel. And um, I also like to make things really tricky for myself as a writer. Um, so I always mm-hmm. add a million sub subplots, <laughs> and then my my favorite game is trying to keep up with the subplots. <laughs> um, that I've introduced. Um, <laughs> so that, that's that's the um, the basic um, yeah. premise. I, it, that 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 element rings true. It, it is one of those books where, <laughs> um, as you go deeper 
you you start to think, oh, how is this novelist going to pull this all together? How is she going to pull this off? <laughs> um, and you do, you do. Uh, tell me about uh, being a teenager on Long Island. Uh, what well, was the vibe? The the aesthetics of this book are are very um, specific. Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> so just, just absolutely. Give me the vibe, Bruce. Yeah, well, because obviously, like the the crime that I'd um, you know very loosely based the um, book around was actually set in 1984, and so um, I'm born in '79, right. so um, I you know when I left New York, um, it was 1994. So I was too young to kind of really have those real kind of experiences as a teen um, over there. So it was sort of like kind of based on my, what the kind of experiences my brother might've been having or like the bigger kids right. that were around me because, you know, I was still fairly, fairly young at that age. Um, so but all the like musical and cultural references. And I was also very, um, you know, inspired by my brother. So everything that he liked, I liked. So when, you know, he, uh, he was 14 and he was into like, you know, um, punk rock, I was into punk rock and I was 10 and therefore bullied, um, at school. <laughs> so, yeah. So all the, the, um, the, the experiences were really kind of vicarious if you, if you like. Um, but, um, you know, what I observed and, and witnessed, but also just from all the pop culture and things that I was really interested in MTV, um, and that sort of thing. Did you stay up late and watch Headbangers Ball on Oh, MTV? yeah, absolutely, yeah. I mean, there was a point, Excellent. I think I remember, like, that my brother was like, you can come to Lollapalooza with me and my friends. And, I mean, I was in ninth grade when I left, and I was like, really? Um, but I didn't get to go, sadly. And, and then I moved back to Western Australia. So... Um, you know, in a weird way, it was possibly... Lola Palooza didn't make it out to Western not Australia. To, to Perth, Western Australia. No, not, not to, um, not to Dunkraig. Um, uh, yeah, so it, it, it was sort of like almost like a vicarious experience of adolescence there. And, um, you know, I also had that feeling, I think, because my generation is like um, exennial, I think. Um, that's what you'd call it. And it's like the missing generation. Like, so we're in between. So <laughs> I think it was sort of like me having my own imagined kind of Gen X experience. Um, and there are a lot of little pre-adolescents in the book um, who th their kind of experiences were probably more like mine. Um, yeah. Twins. Okay. Why, why don't you tell me a bit about Erin um, Sloan, your hero? Uh, she is got a lot going on uh, and I imagine it will be hard to say too much about her without spoiling the action of the novel for readers. So yeah. well, what can you tell me about her? Yeah. Um, yeah. I think she's um, a, a hero who's like an anti-hero too, because I think she could be like, you know, she's sympathetic, but unsympathetic also. And I tried to make her, um, you know, kind of like, um, you know, I find her likeable, um, but she does have a lot of flaws. Um, and I think that's human. Um, I think uh, I was always really inspired by, I, I can't remember exactly what TV show it was, um, but it was Clive um, James was talking about being a writer and he said, um, uh, he described writers as having um, a chip of ice. And I was like, that's a really cool way to describe being a writer where like so you could be watching something like really horrible unfold and, um, you know, sure, you know, your, your, your heart's sort of there and whatnot, but there's this chip of ice and you're this observer that's always kind of going, how am I going to write about this? How am I going to record this? And so that's kind of like, um, what I, I use to um, inform her character. So she has this kind of like this sense of, um, you know, a, 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 an iciness to her or, um, you know, an emotional kind of coldness. Uh, um, but that's also due to her being kind of traumatised by the experiences that she had um, uh, as a teenager growing up. And I think that she wears a lot of the trauma you know, sort of in and on the body. So, um, and that's all I'm going to say about that. Um, but yes, yeah, somebody who also I would say is quite emotionally arrested by having a great deal of, of things happen. Um, so she's quite a prickly 
um, character, but she's also incredibly tenacious and stubborn and strong-willed. Um, interestingly enough... Yeah, there's, there's <laughs> a lot to love. And, um, and it, it's, it, is, it is refreshing to read a, a female protagonist that, that um, lives up to the um, hard drinking <laughs> and uh, casual uh, abuse of pills uh, that, that's kind of wanton in the hard-boiled kind of genre um she's but yeah her drive is just she's fearless <laughs> or or she's also terrified at the same time but it, it, i just uh, i love that she'll she'll um she'll have no bones about uh downing a bottle of whiskey and, and then pursuing someone who may kill her <laughs> well that's exactly what this is a really interesting point because um you know i had i've had quite a few editors working with me on this because obviously i did this book which you know obviously super different um manuscript than it was when i was doing my phd and then um you know i've had a couple of different editors because i've got um you know a uk publisher australian publisher so um there was a couple of questions that were put to me like you know i don't understand why she kind of why is she being so reckless why is she so um why doesn't she care about her life why doesn't she you know why would she do something so dangerous and the thing is like that's a really human thing. If you've been through a huge amount of trauma, yep. there's a sense of being kind of like um, pretty cavalier um, with your own life. So, so in that sense, like, yes, she will do something that seems really foolhardy or whatnot. So it's either brave or stupid, but, but it's also like her fear response has kind of been quite dulled through so many terrifying things happening to her. So that's a really good point. It also just thanks for incredible reading. <laughs> um, let's let's talk about the PhD because uh, it's obvious there's a there's a connection between this this research into true crime inspired fiction and and then the, this this novel kind of sits adjacent or in that vibe. Um, what what brought the phd on did you survive it um and uh, <laughs> yeah how 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 close is the novel to the phd uh, that's that's well survive survive it um i feel like certain synapses in my brain have actually been burnt out and they're just kind of like fizzling away um it was you know and i completed on time which i really this is the first time i can say i've ever done in my adult life <laughs> <laughs> with any kind of degree, um, completing on time, shocking. Um, it was actually, and I, I never, like, I'd sort of thought, you know, years back, like I'll do a PhD maybe. Um, but, but I actually did a PhD, um, really particularly did work with, um, a writer called David Wish Wilson, um, a West Australian. Oh yeah. Writer. Yeah. He's fantastic. Yep. Awesome. Um, yeah, but I, I actually chose to, I wanted to work with him in, uh, in particular because he writes, um, you know, true crime inspired crime fiction or historical crime fiction. There's, I mean, I call it true crime inspired um, fiction. That's the term that I use to describe my work and I would classify other set, other works in that way. Not everyone would use that same right. term. Some historians, in fact, um, use the word um, true crime fiction, but whatever. Um, the reason why I think the dif uh, like I think the distinction is important is because, you know, obviously I'm using the crime as like a kind of like a hook to hang the story on. Um, and it's more about the cultural constellations and like the setting and how important that is. Um, for writers like Dave, who, you know, he's just an exceptional writer and that they a lot of them are West Australian based. Um, you know, they're about, um, writing almost like these unofficial histories. So it's like, that's his way of, of working is, is, is really specific. So, um, I was writing a WA um, based procedural crime novel based on a, um, a cold case. So I wanted to work with him. So that's why I started the PhD. The work was too advanced um, at that stage, as in, I don't mean it was so good, but I mean, I <laughs> worked too much on it. So I had to start a new project. And so I started, I shot the devil. Um, so that's why I did the PhD. 
Um, and then I sort of found my, you know, as I was doing it, I, I had the question, you know, can you write um, other, is there like an ethical framework for writing true crime inspired fiction? Like what are the rules? Are there rules? Um, or is this just like all kind of like a tacit sort of thing? And like, basically people will either kind of like slam you or cancel you or embrace you. Um, and so I kind of started to, you know, that's where my research, um, that's where my research began. We're just asking those questions. Um, and so the PhD was a really great um, thing for me because not only did I get to write the book, which yeah, it is different, um, but uh, it, it, has a huge you know similarity obviously um it was a lot better than my first novel and i think it was because i got to work with someone um you know as talented as dave who really helped me and guided me a lot um in the writing of the fiction but also in the decisions that i made as a writer um so i really looked to him to help me with the ethical questions um that i had too yeah um ethical questions that's 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 what's been buzzing around in my my brain a bit um and and also the prevalence and and the big change in not true crime inspired fiction but but the true crime genre uh, yes. or or kind of yes. the phenomenon um Absolutely. in the west um yeah. in in the last uh, five or ten years yeah uh, and and in in this novel, your protagonist spends a lot of time on a forum, which is called something like True Crime Happened to Me. Yeah. Which is supposedly like like uh, your alleged like survivors or uh, yeah. friends, allies, or, or you know, just people involved in, in these crimes that, you know, the internet is just a wash with um uh, would-be sleuths trying to or, or, or just people with opinions about um, and they're trying to put their opinions forward. Do those forums exist? Have you been on them? Are they kind of I've, Reddit I've or things like at, that? I've looked at similar kind of forums. I mean, obviously that, that one's a fictional one um, and it obviously served a purpose, um, you know, in a plot line, <laughs> um, but certainly. And also like I was thinking of things like Reddit and stuff where you like, because if you look up any kind of crime, you'll see people that really try to also um, jump on board and be like, yes, that was my cousin's cousin's, um, you know, grandmother. Yeah. Um, uh, but, you know, the, the thing, and this is kind of like, you know, this happened to me kind of fairly recently. Um, I was talking to another author on Twitter and we were just giving true crime recs about, you know, what documentaries, what things we were watching. And one of them was um, uh, 1979 um, Fall, I think it's called Fall River. Um, uh, and it's really, really, it's about satanic panic right up my alley um and so i recommended that and then someone jumped on the um thread and said um oh, you know hi ruth you, you know i highly recommend this documentary also i knew doreen the victim and i it was you know i i believe it was really genuine and it was just one of those things where i suddenly had this moment of like deep shame where i was like you know, this isn't a movie recommendation. It's not like, you know, or, yeah. or like going to a, a restaurant going, try the ravioli. It's like, that's actually someone's um, friend or, you know, schoolmate. And, um, you know, true crime is in entertainment, you know, on on um, some level um, now, like say, you know, with Netflix, there, you know, this whole kind of subgenre. But I think it's really easy to forget that these this these aren't fictional characters that they are actually real people um and i you know i just always get a big kind of dose of that when i um because it's i you know i've done a phd on it but i forget um myself um quite frequently too because you know it just because it, it when it's in this narrativized form you, you feel like it's fiction yes yes absolutely and I, I feel like the the weight of public interest in in particular cases has a has a big effect on justice or the implication of of how that that case goes. So um, so like yeah. so many people being obsessed with Joe Exotic just it just uh, you know like he's a bad person <laughs> arguably and and his platform and and 
uh, and therefore money has just uh, gone through the roof um, because of people being obsessed with what a train wreck his his life has been. I know, um, I know. As a, as a bad example. Uh, but also just, um, yeah, like amateur sleuths have, because of the internet and like the power of surveillance and social media, they also have a lot of power these days. It, it's it's not just uh, wackos like going through all uh, the newspaper microfilms. It's totally it's like they can do real work. Totally, and I think there's a this is great um kind of ability to reverse miscarriages of justice. And um, you know, I think mm. seeing a lot of stuff like that with the West Memphis Three, for example, that was like a really good. Um, example um, of of how true crime uh, documentaries and podcasts can actually really help um, and also a lot of cold cases have been resolved so there's like this immense um, ability um, for uh, for it to do good um, I think there are a lot of books um, that have done that also um, you know we in Australia I can think of a number of examples also where where that happened um, you know, I'm, I think like, you know, I'd be really interested one day to do, you know, a, a, like a, an actual true crime book. Um, but I, I feel like there's so much weight and responsibility when you're working with true crime itself to, you know, to find that outcome. Mm. And I think, cause you know, there's so many podcasts out there now, um, that are attempting to do that. And it's a tremendous like, you, you know, you're not an investigator. A lot of them aren't investigators. So, um, you know, yeah. having that outcome, that, that's a really heavy responsibility. So. Uh, I want to ask about the structure of this novel and, and mm -hmm. how, it, how it came to its finished form. Because as you say, it's, it's been a long editing process with different yeah. people involved and, and there was an academic side to it. Yeah. Um, the 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 novel as as you read it um is like this beautiful layer cake kind of thing <laughs> uh where you've got you know the majority of the book is um first person prose from erin uh going through the action but she's also writing prose herself you know of her experiences um I'll say no more. And <laughs> there's also someone sending her chapters of a memoir. And, and that is in the novel as well. So you, you've got all these different things coming together. And every time you kind of something, something breaks in your plot, well, not yeah. like breaking news hits your plot, like yeah. it, it revolutionizes everything you've kind of read thus far. Uh, it's like a weird beautiful babushka doll uh how how did you how did you pull it together and how how much change did it go through uh it, that was a that was actually you know the trickiest part i think because everything had to tee up you know so if something happened in resident alien um it had to happen in the real world of the story in the current day you know because obviously mm. um the memoir part is set um you know back in time um, but then you've got the emails coming through and you've got, <laughs> oh, so it's, it, there's just all the, so many texts. Um, so things really had to sort of um, uh, line up and that was, that was tricky. Um, but I did want, rather than there just being a lot of kind of like backstory or kind of like just, you know, her sort of sitting at the window kind of mistily remembering things, I wanted mm. there to be, you know, that, element of, of a diary and also because you know she is a writer so she's writing it down so she's writing it partly for her her piece and then i wanted there to be that contesting narrative which was resident alien and also um you know the perspective of another um you know person who was involved in the um in the events of the past and you know for her to it, it, it that to challenge her memory too um so and be like yes and like, then eventually she sees herself in someone else's narrative yeah that's right to, to see yourself like um yeah represented in in a story um in someone else's diary yeah so that's um 
that's kind of like it was it's kind of like competing narratives um and yeah just to add add different layers of a little bit of complexity um but yeah it, it you know it was a little challenging for me to to tie that all up um the the book itself like i'm not I, i'm going to say this is probably kind of annoying but it wasn't um it wasn't one of those books where my first novel took me like practically a decade to write in contrast this book um basically took a year and a half like um so i'm really refining my time <laughs> management skills but this came this came out a lot easier that uh, like those kind of bits were trickier and needed more work um uh, i'm not super mentally um organized as a person i think i've got a lot of tabs open um so <laughs> <laughs> that's that was a little bit um that was a little bit harder and that needed a little bit more um tweaking um, but yeah, this book was actually a significantly easier book to write um, for some reason. And I think it was partly because I really wanted to write my remembrances of, of where, you know, I'd been and where I'd lived. And, you know, the, weirdly enough, all the Americanisms and all of those sort of things came back so easily. It was, you know, it was really peculiar. So That's great to hear because that's one of the things I like best about this book is, is you, you, you're writing a, a time and place that, that seems kind of uh, um, iconic or, or um, uh, you know, has a kind of cult status, you know, the 80s, 90s mental head culture. Um, but uh, you write it really authentically and with a really fresh voice. And, and then you've got a, a, a novel which is which has a I'm not gonna say bizarre but like uh, a really interesting structure <laughs> um complementing that and and uh, there's a lot going on there's there's just a lot to dig out of what's a really tight crime thriller uh how you've got some great endorsements as well and, and as you say being published internationally um what what are your hopes for the reception of the thing or are you just are you just gonna ride the wave and just love it and work on another book yeah well i mean I'll, like obviously my hopes are that you know i'll get it picked up in america which would be great you know um uh you know obviously i'm just i'm so excited to uh release it because you know uh it was uh pushed forward so last year it was meant to come out so i've just been waiting and waiting you know um uh and i'm i'm just you know, hoping for a physical launch. That's, 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 you know, one of my hopes, um, because, you know, it's the 1st of September. Um, so, uh, but yeah, I'm just, you know, I'm just hoping that it gets picked up and it gets embraced and people like it. Um, you know, as, as, as the kind of like launch date, like really looms, I am having some great nightmares where I have writers just writing tweets like, um, yeah, that was so ordinary. <laughs> So basically I'm hoping that that doesn't happen and <laughs> um, yeah, and I'm hoping for a U US deal. That's, that's what I hope for. Um, I also feel like the book's really cinematic and um, I think it has, I'd love for it to be a series or a movie. That would be really, really, really exciting for me. Um, yeah. That would, that, I could, I could see that. That yeah, would be very it, cool. It would be, it, feels, it would be really aesthetically brilliant. That's but what it would I also feel. like really, really change as well. It would you'd have to tell the story in a different way. Yeah, that be, that's that would be true. Cool to see. I'd love to see just someone take it and turn it into something completely new and different. Yeah, that um, would be awesome. Uh, you, speaking of aesthetics, like uh, if there was a playlist or a mixtape to accompany this novel, the reading experience, uh, who would be on it? Oh wow! Well, I've already made one. So um, I made one for. Oh mate. <laughs> I went. I made one for the UK publisher. So you know, I had to include um, some of the tweeny music that that's in the book, like um, and some of the mainstream music. Like there was a bit of Mariah Carey. There was a bit of B52s. Um, there was a bit of that sort of stuff. But mainly, it was stuff like suicidal tendencies, because that's what the book um, I Shot the Devil. That was the that a suicidal tendencies song. Um, 
I put a bit of um, like you know, just some metal, some actual metal. There's obviously some ACDC in there, which had to happen. Um, but then there was a little bit more like kind of like a darker, heavier death metal, some Faith No More, uh, Mr. Bungle. Very good. Um, yeah. And um, hmm, what else? Um, yeah, I put some more like, because I wasn't really into like death death metal i was more into kind of like um you know bands like iron maiden and you know megadeth and um uh, metallica and stuff like that so i think i've included a little bit of yeah. that anything that was really and there's a lot of musical references i had to actually change because i wrote some lyrics which i think every novelist tries to squeeze in and get away with some things and then the publisher's like no 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 so i've had to write my own um death metal lyrics um, which was actually really fun. Um, <laughs> oh, that, that, what a time. <laughs> I know. I know. The song's called Autoerotic, I think. And that's, I, <laughs> I, wrote, I wrote those death metal lyrics. So, you know, maybe that's my next career move. Yeah, if the yeah. novelist <laughs> doesn't work out, <laughs> there's always death metal. Um, <laughs> Are you gonna are you gonna write more? Can we expect more from you? Oh yeah. Well, I've got. I mean, my first manuscript is just sort of sitting there, um, and that was actually at the, around the same time as the book got awarded the Rochelle Prize. I was sending that out too, and that got shortlisted for something, and that's just sort of been sitting there. Um, but I have actually written two more books in the meantime. Oh wow. Yeah, so, um, yeah, so definitely. I mean, that, that's, that's, that's the plan. Um, yeah, I'm definitely, for, like I said, I'm faster now than I was with the first one. Yeah, you are. If I, took, if I wrote a book every decade, well, you know, I wouldn't be writing many books. <laughs> Let's put it that way. So, although there's oh, well, nothing uh, wrong with that. Everyone Patty should. Pat does that, so, you know, and she's great. Well said. Um, I, I encourage everyone to go and check this one out. Um, Ruth McGyver, thank you very much for your time today. Thank you so much for having me today. <laughs> and you can buy I Shot the Devil. Uh, it's published by Shet and it's available online at booktopia.com.au. Thank you for listening to the Booktopia podcast channel. Don't forget, you can subscribe to us on SoundCloud and iTunes for free and get access to hundreds of author discussions, book analysis pieces and more. Or, if your eyes need a workout, head to Booktopia TV on YouTube. Don't forget, for all books featured in this podcast and for access to a whole bunch of other fun content on our blog, head to Booktopia, Australia's local bookstore at booktopia.com.au dot